Well, hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart, back here again with some more teaching tips. No longer Tuesday teaching tips, just going to be teaching tips with Sally now. And I'm back today on the subject of developing freedom and flexibility. Now, I did one last week and um, this was about freedom and flexibility and I was really highlighting the use of the word velocity and how you can help students to develop that as scales, through scales. Somebody, I think it was Stephen, um, said, you know, you started with this freedom and flexibility and then you went into scales, but there are other really good approaches that you can use. And of course there are, yeah. Scales was just one way of showing that and maybe it wasn't the most sensible starting place. So let's just go back a little bit and talk about freedom and flexibility at the piano a little more, because it did say right from the start. So in the very first lessons, what we want to avoid is having our pupils all fixed around the middle C approach. Because what that does is it inhibits the body and it just brings everything in. Now, I don't know whether when you sit at the piano, when you put your thumbs on middle C, what it does is it brings everything in in the wrong place. So you can see that instead of having what's called a little finger alignment all the way down here if I actually put my hand on middle C both my thumbs then it does the opposite and I end up with that alignment which is a thumb alignment and if you just do that you can feel it's so uncomfortable it is not a natural alignment stand up give your hands a shake I can't because you won't see me but give your hands a shake and just see how they naturally fall and if you do Pilates, then you will always be told, certainly my Pilates teacher talks about our little finger alignment and you have an alignment going down the outside of your arm through to your little finger. And when you come onto the keyboard with your young beginner students, they want to follow that alignment. And you don't get that, I'm afraid, by coming into middle C. You get that further apart. And look how just being free and flexible at the piano, I can cover the whole of the piano. Okay, yes, I'm growing up. But nevertheless, children can as well, even though they're smaller. So one thing you can do from the start is to get them to play lovely imaginative pieces that help them to explore here and there and everywhere. And this is very much linked up with the idea of just creating music, making music. They're able to make music much um, in, a, in a much more ready and advanced way then they can read music and the reading and the playing at the beginning doesn't necessarily go together but it will lead in to reading and playing from reading but that's a different issue altogether freedom and flexibility is the topic for today so i'm going to show you a couple of pieces that that this works and these are just examples and this is a piece by the lovely wendy stevens from compose create and this is called Mermaid Wishes. Now, she brought this up in a webinar with us at the Curious Piano Teachers a couple of months ago. And actually, I already had a student learning this piece. And um, Mermaid Wishes, it's, it's a delightful piece of music. And it's this dreamy and magical. You have to pedal down all the way through. And it starts up here. I'll just play you a little blast of it. A little blast, a little shimmer of it, let's say. comes down and it repeats the same thing down an octave and then at the beginning of the uh, towards the end of the piece the piece goes right the way up and finishes down here so you have to have this lovely expanse in front of you of the keyboard um, this is this is the very end and then I'll tell you a little bit about my student and what happened um, so here we go last few bars it starts here <laughs> magical sound even more magical on an acoustic piano I have to say so you can see we're covering up here and then we have this lovely gesture to make as they come down to here and it's really important 
that they get encouraged to do that. And certainly my student wasn't quite doing that. She was taking a shortcut down here. So we had to practice that lovely gesture. The other thing that she was doing when I heard it the first week after she'd, she'd learned it, because of course they, they pick this up really, really quickly. It's got lovely words to it. And I often make a video to help them get round to it is she would she'd start up here and she'd move her bottom and then the next bit and she'd shuffle down and, and then here it would be and then she'd shuffle and then she'd shuffle back down here so her bottom was continuously on the move wherever she was um so i i pointed you know i said to her do you know what would happen if you kept yourself in the same place? Let's see if we can sit. And of course, the middle of the piano is really around E, E flat, somewhere right around there. That's really the middle of the piano where you want them to be positioned. I said, um, and how shall I help you? You know, you're going to forget and you're going to start moving up and down. How can I help to remind you that you've done that? Can you think of a word that I could say? You know, because I didn't just want to bark out an order. I wanted to make it fun as well. Can you think of a word that I could say that would help you to remember? <laughs> For some reason, she said bananas. Whether she just had a banana, I don't know. So she started off the piece and every time she moved, I said the word bananas and she had to get, reposition herself and start again. And it was a lot of fun. And um, she, she quickly kind of cottoned on that she has to have you know, going back to what we've talked about, well, I mean, it's not that this is new to her, but they forget, and she needs to have her water wings so that the arms are away from the side, a lovely long extended body, and sitting in the right place, and the feet really firmly positioned on the floor. And bananas, she remembered for the next week. I said, oh, can you just remind me what that word was, and why did you use it last, why did I use it last week? And she was able to tell me, and by the next week, she had that lovely freedom and flexibility to move all the way through the piano. So many thanks to Wendy Stevens for writing such beautiful music as Mermaid Wishes and that's just one piece that I'm sure you could try out if you go over onto her website composecreate.com but of course there's lots and lots of other great pieces that you can use and be creative and come up with a story yourself. Why not? Well I hope that's helpful. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday lunchtime. I can see I've got Francis out there and I think I saw Sharon earlier. Sharon Scott, so hello there. Um, hello to Joy who's watching and anybody else who watches this later. Many thanks. Have a good afternoon. Bye for now.